Hello everyone! Welcome back to Reading with Leanne. Today we are going to read the true story of the three little pigs. This is told by John Siska and it was illustrated by Lane Smith. So looking at the cover of our book, we have a news article and we see the pigs being blown away and we have a wolf doing the huffing and puffing. So I wonder if this version, the true story, is different from the version we know. Let's see. Everyone knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. So this is the wolf side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault. Wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, Folks would probably think you were big and bad, too. What's in this cheeseburger? I spy a mouse. Probably a rabbit. Hmm. But, like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. <gasps> So he draws a nose, ooh, what's coming out of that nose? And he draws a measuring cup. This is the real story. Way back in once upon a time time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old gran. I had a terrible sneezing cold. Uh, 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 choo! I ran out of sugar. <gasps> Look at his granny. This almost looks like the wolf from Little Red Riding Hood. Ooh, so let's see. In his cake, there goes the milk, there goes the eggs. Is that a little bunny? But he shakes, 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 and there's no sugar. So I walk down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now, this neighbor was a pig, and he wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house of straw? With his measuring cup, he walks to the neighbors. So, of course, the minute I knock on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into someone else's house, so I called, Little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. But that's when my nose started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed. Oh, a great sneeze. Look at the straw fly. Look at the little pig jumping. And you know what? The whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw. So I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. Oh. So he says he didn't purposely blow the house down. He says that he just sneezed and the house came down. And he says that the pig was dead. I don't know, was the pig dead or was the pig hiding? I was feeling a bit better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar. So I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. He had built his house of sticks. I rang the bell on the stick house. Nobody answered. 
I called. Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back. Go away, wolf. You can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. So it looks like the pig is using a razor, shaving the little hairs. I just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. I huffed, I snuffed, I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a, a great sneeze. And the wood goes flying, the pig goes flying. And you're not gonna believe it, but this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. When the dust was cleared, there was the second pig, dead as a doornail. Wolf's honor. Hmm, curious. Look at the wood that fell. Doesn't it look like a spoon and a knife and your two forks? Is this pig really dead or is it hiding? I'm not sure. It's undetermined, but he eats the pig. Now, you know food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full. Look at the wolf's tummy. But my cold was feeling a little bit better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family. He had built his house of bricks. I knocked on the brick house. No answer. I called Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And you know what that rude little porker answered. Get out of here, wolf. Don't bother me again. Oh, look, he's looking through the peephole. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar and he didn't give me one little cup for my dear sweet old granny's birthday cake. What a pig! I was about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake when I felt my cold coming in. I huffed. I snuffed. I'm too. <clears throat> I sneezed once again. Then the third little pig yelled. And your old granny can sit on a pin. <sighs> no, that's not nice. Now, I'm usually a pretty calm fellow, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go crazy. When the cops drove up, of course, I was trying to break down the pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. The rest, as they say, is history. The big bad wolf. So the news reporters reported him blowing down house one, eating the pig, blowing house two, eating the pig and trying to blow down house three. That's how the story began, he says. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the whole story with all of that huff and puff and blow your house down. And they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. The real story. I was framed. But maybe you can loan me a cup of sugar. Look at Alexander Wolf. He is old now, locked up in jail with a piggy guard. And look, the scenes of the crime. House A, B, and C. So that's it. Do you believe this wolf story? Is this the true story of what actually happened? This is called The True Story of the Three Little Pigs, as told by John Siska, and it was illustrated by Lane Smith. It shows us a different perspective. I hope you enjoyed reading along with me.